Hi there, Wycliffe Barrett, X-Plane Dedicated. Today's video is sponsored by Just Flight. More about those later, but before we get started, give me a thumbs up, hit the like button, subscribe, and if you can find the bell wherever it is, hit the bell and you will be notified of when videos go live. So, as I say, we're going to have a look at the Vulcan bomber. Let's get right into it. The Avro Vulcan by Just Flight. B Mark II or the K2 and the MRR. So you've got three Vulcan types. The Vulcan bomber, of course, was the nuclear deterrent of the United Kingdom back in the late 1950s and all the way through the 1960s and was actually used in the Falklands War, which was, I believe, 1984. Anyway, coming back to the aircraft, it is huge. It's an absolute beast of a machine and I remember as a young boy actually seeing one of these fly over my house in Bolton in Lancashire and uh, it must have been at least at uh, 2,000 feet but it felt as though it was only a couple of hundred feet above me and that I could touch its belly. With this aircraft you get a fabulous checklist and you can see on the left hand side the, the uh, system whereby you can scroll on the little arrow that points out and this menu comes out and we've got a complete checklist here which is a pre-flight quick start etc etc after takeoff checks and climb checks etc it's absolutely huge it's, it's very very comprehensive thing is of course with this aircraft it is big it's got a lot to it got flight computer there which shows you fuel burn rates and endurance i've got an endurance of six hours 39 minutes there but if you look at the fuel flow you can see i'm just burning through fuel here on the ground at idle you can see it fuel use there going really quickly so as i say it's, it's huge and in this aircraft i think there was a crew of four or five three or four i think it was four you can also put ordnance on the aircraft on the b mark ii uh, so you can put bombs on you can put extra fuel pods etc and fuel tanks it's really really quite good and the the modeling on it is superb on this uh, menu screen that pops out on the left hand side there you've got different things that you can look at so you've got radios you've got engine management you can change the uh, reflections this is the i think that's the autopilot um which is really basic you can call your power supply unit there uh, you can change the reflections of the lights we've also got a parachute for stopping uh, which i deployed there of course it's going the wrong way but if i was moving forward it would be behind the aircraft as I say, you can change the glass reflections inside, although when you see the inside of the cockpit, it is so complex and so complicated. It's all over the place. And uh, you, know, you really wonder, you kind of think, where do you go from here? There are a number of views that are already pre-programmed into the aircraft. So just by using um, a, a, a spare button on my joystick, I could have a quick look around. There is mouse scrolling, of course, and if you've got X camera, you could set set up the views that you want anyway. You could have as many different views as you'd like. It's pretty complex, and one thing the manual does do it provides you with a very good kind of a tutorial. You know, getting off the ground type situation. Here we are at RAF Saint Anthony. The red writing you can see there is uh, aircraft from Traffic Global. I forgot to turn that off, but I thought it might be interesting to try and get this up in the air. Uh, say it's a big old aircraft and uh, it would be interesting to see if we could fly it just by taking off which you can just take some doing um, as you can see the manual here very very comprehensive manual and I thought I'd scroll through it very quickly for you and uh, you know it's usual thing introduction installation updates and support and there's already been a number of updates since i uh, received this uh, aircraft systems guide there's a panel guide which is very very useful because of the complexity of the panels uh, model options different model options and then flying the vulcan so you're getting started starting the engines configuring the aircraft taxi takeoff climb cruise descent so there's a kind of a tutorial in there procedures all the different procedures and limitations on this aircraft that there are not that many because it is just a beast of a machine um, and uh, once i did take off i took off from saint Athen, uh, 
I wasn't using autopilots or anything. I was just hand flying it, and you could feel the weight of the aircraft as you're flying. It really is really quite cumbersome, and you know it just lumbers along. It really takes its time in turns, but you know there's so much power. It's just uncanny. Um, here we have the uh, paragraph for starting the engines, and there's rapid start. This set your throttles to fifty percent. Air selector switch, rapid ignition switch on, engine master switch on, engine air switches all shut, and rapid start button press. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff there for you. But you've got a full checklist, as I say, and this is just a copy of the checklist that come out on that side panel. So you could print the manual off if you wanted to, which is what I like to do. Print the manual off and go through it from there. Um, the aircraft was. Uh, produced by Thranda Design, um, Just Flies are just the publishers and very good publishers they are and uh, I thank them for sponsoring this video. So they have the manual, as I say, really comprehensive, there's plenty in there, I forget how many pages it is, I think it's 80 plus pages in the manual, which is located within your Vulcan um, folder, which is inside your X-Plane folder. As I say, you can drop ordnance as well, so that's quite useful, good fun, dropping your ordnance, as they say, and it allows you to, you know, bomb things as well, which is it's always good fun, isn't it, bombing stuff. Uh, here we are in the cockpit, as you can see, it's really old school, you know, there's radios, and I don't even know whether it's got an I and R. it must have, uh, but you've got... You know, the aircraft co-pilot and then you've got an engineer station behind you as well and uh, it's just it is massive very very complex I find um, if you're into military aircraft this will be great fun if you're not into military aircraft there's quite a bit of learning to be had from this aircraft back in a moment a word from I'm just going to interrupt the video now for a few moments just to talk about the sponsors of the video today which is just flight justflight.com just flight have been one of the foremost publishers of flight simulation in the UK for at least 20 years maybe just a little bit more they are publishers of high-end aircraft for flight simulator and the flight simulators they deal with are of course uh, X-Plane uh, FSX P3D, Aerofly and uh, a number of others as well. They do scenery, they do aircraft, they do military aircraft, they do vintage aircraft, they have mission packs, scenery in airports, light aircraft management, traffic AI, tools and utilities all within one area which is of course JustFlight.com. So once again many thanks to Scott Phillips and the team at JustFlight for sponsoring this video. Let's get right back to the Vulcan. So it's time to take off in this aircraft and get it airborne. It's a bit of a handful on the runway. Um, I had rudder pedals on, but uh, perhaps I should have been using the tiller. Anyway, once you get up to airspeed, everything settles down. It becomes a lot more stable, and it's just a case of making sure you pull back on that stick and get yourself airborne. As I say, it's a big, big old aircraft. Big, heavy, cumbersome, but there's so much power that when you take off, you don't really need to worry it'll take off on virtually any length of runway I think. Time to get the gear up and as you can see the gear is well modelled, the whole aircraft is well modelled. Um, the one thing I did have difficulty with was I couldn't find, couldn't find any flap controls so I'm not quite sure where there are, there are flaps. Um, I, I, I couldn't find it but then again it, you know it's been a really weird time and it's one of the reasons why this review is so late because of the situation we're in at the moment uh, throughout the world um, so certainly ailerons but I think it might just take off on sheer brute force and power through those massive engines of it that are burning all that fuel and uh, the sound in this is very very good it's probably not the best sound pack in the world but it, fairly comprehensive when you take an external view it is very very loud I've kept the sound off whilst I've been recording this video because it is extremely loud and it would just drown me out no matter how how much I turn the volume down it would drown me out so I turned that off as you can see the weather is pretty cloudy um, once again using the SkyMax Pro with FSGRW so the weather was pretty cloudy 
over St. Afton, uh, and I did try to come around and get back to land, but found it increasingly difficult um, because of the speed of the aircraft also, and because I had no visual cues that much at this altitude, and it, it climbs very, very fast, I will tell you. It climbs extremely flat, fast, um, but it's a, it is absolutely quite a joy to fly. I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure whether that bank angle would be appropriate for this aircraft, although um, it is a delta wing, but I don't think you'd fly it that far out of the envelope. You know, I think it would be a lot gentler. There's the southern coast of Wales, South Wales, uh, not far from Cardiff there, I believe. I was trying to come around and get back on for the runway, but uh, I found it a bit difficult because got a limited view in the cockpit, you will notice that, and uh, like a lot of aircraft from this era, limited view out of the comp cockpit, and so I found it difficult trying to find my way back to the runway, especially with this cloud. Maybe I should have turned the weather off, but uh, it was interesting to fly through this. There you can see St. Athen just, just out of the left-hand cockpit window as I desperately tried to get it around. So, uh, should you buy this? Well, if you're into military aircraft, I think it's one you must have in your uh, in your hangar. Um, as I say, fabulous uh, aircraft to fly. It's got a range of around about 4,750 miles, so you could have some jolly good fun with that. Uh, it's um, if you wanted to fly military operations, then you would online, for example, in Batsim, you'd have to join a, a VOSA. VOSA, which is the military arm of BATSIM, which would allow you to uh, take this aircraft out on military operations. But if you're just flying it on VATSIM A to B from RAF Price Norton up to RAF Valley, that's not a problem at all. Um, certainly wouldn't be able to do any bombing runs uh, uh, without being in a uh, military VA, uh, VOSA. You can find out all about those on BATSIM. So, um, is it worth buying? I think it is actually. Uh, you get, as I say, there are 11 paint schemes that come all together. Um, the Vulcan K2 has um, four squadron numbers. Uh, the Vulcan MRR uh, has two paint schemes and two squadron numbers. So it's fairly comprehensive what you get with this aircraft. Um, here you can see I was headed towards the coast and needed to turn left by the uh, coke factory there, the coal, coal factory, and turn left and try to get on for um, RAF St. Athen, but it wasn't going to happen. Once again, too much speed. So what else do we get with the aircraft? That's about it. What you see is what you get. Um, pretty good. I like it. Um, is it worth buying? If you're into military aircraft, then yeah, you would buy it, without a doubt. And uh, you know, you'd really enjoy it as well. I'll put the price up at the end of the video so we can see exactly how much it is. It's from JustLight.com, um, and uh, it's been released now a couple of weeks, um, and already it's had, I think, two or three updates. The updates are done automatically from uh, within uh, JustLight and the JustLight's auto update system. Um, you get an e uh, you get an email telling you there's an update, and you just go in and update it. It's so simple; it's uh, it's really quite easy. General systems with this aircraft, uh, as I say, it's a crew of five. I thought it was four, but it's a crew of five. You've got a captain and co-pilot, air electronics officer, navigator, and plotter, and then a navigator and radar. So to manage all of that. <laughs> as one pilot is quite a handful quite a handful indeed um, but yeah it's, it's good fun and uh, as I say I think it's well worth the money now I'm not sure but just like have been having a spring sale I'm not, I'm not sure whether this aircraft is in spring sale but uh, they have got lots of others in the spring sale um, and I think there's reductions of something like 30% which a lot of developers are doing at the moment. A lot of developers are, are offering some great discounts on their products. So 
I don't think there's very much more for me to say. I'm going to just kind of keep quiet for a minute as I overshoot here. I did try to make it, but I was just going way too fast. So I decided to pull out, climb away. I've not, I, not, I don't think this aircraft has afterburner, but it doesn't need it because it's just the engines are just so powerful. And those, obviously, a lot of the uh, more modern jet aircraft, uh, military aircraft, have um, after, afterburner, but I'm not, I'm not so sure this one does. There's Aria sent out and below me in the mist and cloud that I pulled away from. All very nice indeed. Handles lovely. A bit of a handful as we fly out over the South Wales countryside, heading north towards uh, St Hilary and Wembo TV Mass. Pulling it around there once again. I don't think that that uh, that, that bank angle would be acceptable. It would be right outside the envelope, but it you know didn't fall out of the sky, so it's not all bad, is it? As they say, not all bad at all lovely anyway it's up to you hope you've enjoyed the video hope you found it useful don't forget my name is Wycliffe Barrow and we'll see you again in the very near future there's the price 39.99 if you've got any points then you can use them don't forget to subscribe give me a thumbs up click on the notification bell and we'll see you all soon take care cheerio